Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rohit and this is the web service integration training. This is the complete new series training we are going to start. We'll discuss one by one uh, web service integration, integrations and we'll deep dive maybe a little bit integration half, all those stuff one by one. This is the PPT I have prepared and uh, this is my website. If you want to find out any documentation, any coding, Everything I am going to paste it into my website and in front of you even. Uh, so if you go to the documentation, under this documentation you can see that web service integration or else you can go to the documentation and then inside the documentation you will be find out that web service integration. So this is the complete uh, series we are going to discuss one by one. Uh, what are the things we are going to discuss, any code or any, any image or anything. Everything will be uh, hosted into my website so you can track that. So basically in this today's sections we will talk about that uh, web service integration. So in this web service integration series, what are the things we are going to cover? Let's see uh, quickly. So we'll talk about the web service integration. We'll talk about that inbound and outbound integration. We'll talk about that uh, SOAP integration, REST integration, transform map integrations. We'll talk about that inbound, act, uh, inbound action integration, which is actually mail based, but we'll discuss that. We'll talk about the integration tools, what are the integration tools we are required and then we we'll finally we'll talk about the service now to service now integration and few other topics will definitely include in our series. So these are the topics we are going to connect. Uh, so um, if you need this PPT event, this PPT I have prepared, this PPT will be also available in my website. Um, uh, so I'll give that link to you guys. Uh, and if you have any question, let me know in my comment sections. And Definitely please like, share and subscribe to uh, my channel. So without wasting time, let's get started. As I said that this website will be keep on, in, I'm, I'll keep on adding these topics or details. So now you can see that right now we have, I know, nine topics. But when you will cover this complete series on the last or end of the day, we'll uh, update this whole uh, website or whole pages so don't worry about that and then today's session is all about the theoretical part that what is integration what all the uh, staffs are required uh, what are the tools are required but again it is also important to understand that um, uh, what is integration and how we are actually doing the integrate uh, so yeah today's session is all about the theoretical sessions and the next sessions or next day we will discuss uh, more practical uh, instead of this theoretical part very first thing is that we'll talk about that what is the integration so let's see what is the integration so integration is a kind of um, uh, you know the automation uh, which can uh, you know um, let's, i mean let's say this is my service now instance and then from this service now instance i want to connect azure i want to connect any of these platform um, let's say uh, active directory or maybe um, uh, let's say that aws any of this platform cloud based or non cloud based any of this platform in that case, uh, you know, uh, so Slack, Splunk, uh, you know, Jira, Salesforce, these are the other, the other different, different platform, right? And I am the service now, I mean, I'm the service now developer or the service now instance, I own that. So if I want to send some data from service now instance to the Salesforce, to Jira, to, to Microsoft Azure, Splunk, uh, Slack, or maybe any other, other any of these um, third party application that we call the integration, okay? Now integration can be happen two ways, either I send to them or they might be sent to me. Okay, so both the way we can do that. So let's say in certain criteria, I want to send the details to them. So that is kind of one integration. Another integration is that in that certain condition, they send to me. So that called, we call, we can call that integration. Let's say that, um, you know, whenever the story is created to the service now, so because Jira is a uh, huge platform, or a very good platform to managing the story, epic and everything, right? So let's say that when um, when any ticket or any story is created to the Jira side, that details will be come to automatically to my service now instance. So any incident which is getting created to the Jira side will be cascaded and sent back to my service now instance. And, and in my service now instance, it will be created a story, okay? And then it will be, I mean, same copy will be present to that Jira and service now. Any status changes to the Jira side will be cascaded to service now, or any uh, status changes to the service now will be cascaded to the Jira. So any attachment attached to the, uh, you know, both the way it will be managed. So that two things can be happen. So some people, maybe some external people, they don't have access to the service now. They can track these details to the Jira side. 
and similarly some people who directly have the access to the service node and they don't have access to the jira they also can track that so both the way uh, we don't need to be create unnecessary uh, i mean uh, we need, don't need to give unnecessary access to the them okay let's assume that you have a uh, laptop called lenovo and then in this lenovo laptop uh, you you are uh, you know you know purchasing the lenovo laptop once you purchase the lenovo laptop that you put all the uh, information during the registration of that uh, activation okay so you put your name email address you put your uh, date of birth uh, your product key your laptop key everything is stored into the lenovo side now think about that in this valid duration or valid uh, you know uh, warranty your laptop might be crashed now what will be happen so this is my uh, lenovo website maybe and then this time the laptop crash user will come to this site and then they will register uh, that my laptop is crashed so here they will register now Lenovo directly don't uh, you know repair the laptop they've given contract to the third party let's say the Jira or something like that they provide the contract to the third party now what will be happen the third party will will need all this information like which kind of um, you know when you visit to that third party so Lenovo once you register to the Lenovo they will give you that visit to this office with this address okay now you visit that office and then in this office they might need to validate certain information that you are correct user you are under the warranty you are bringing the correct laptop everything there needs to be validated how do we how do they do that they either can send from here to here that all the details that you have received or else they can do an integration once that uh, once this ticket is getting created to the Lenovo side, they directly send automatically by the system send and create a ticket here also in the Jira side, so that uh, when the customer will visit to that this that store, they have all this information. So this is the benefits of the integration. The data extends from one instance to the another instance in real time. Maybe uh, you know uh, come you know delay also. I mean it can be also delay like. Uh, um, it might not be real time, but yeah, data exchanging from one instance to the another instance, we call the integration. So let's see what is the uh, integration or maybe the web service integration. So HTTP based web service allow uh, diverse application to talk each other. So basically one, one application will allow to talk another, inst uh, another application and um, you know, in real time or maybe in, um, you know, schedule based or any other time period. Okay. Service now support both inbound and outbound web service. It means the service now can send the data or and service now can receive the data. Both the things they can do that. Okay, so this is the purpose of this, uh, you know, uh, the integration. Let's talk about that um, type of integration. So we talk about the, what is the integration. Let's talk about the type of integration. As I mentioned, integration is a two type of integration. One is the inbound integration, another is the outbound integration. Inbound integration means that i don't do anything okay i am waiting okay i am in idle state and i am waiting and third party sent some details to me third, third party sent details to me and based on the details i am performing certain action so so let's say third party involve or invoke our endpoint and then they send some data and then based on that i decided that by my system logic i decided that i should create a incident or i should create a change that is the in, inbound so inbound integration means that any data I am receiving by third party environment, so I am not doing anything. I am sitting idle and then in a, a third party is sending some data to me and the trigger is happening from the third party. So I am sitting idle based on the certain condition, maybe someone come to uh, come and register in the third party website or maybe after certain time third party is sending the data. So this is the third party is triggering. I am not triggering. Third party is triggering and sending some data to me and they are consuming my endpoint okay so basically the third party is consuming my endpoint and to uh, send uh, the data and called that's called the inbound okay basically whenever third party sending some data that we call the in, uh, inbound once i am i am receiving it my system will process something that is called i mean inbound okay now similarly outbound third party is doing nothing okay third party is doing nothing I based on condition let's say that uh, someone raised the request and based on this condition I sending some data from my side to the third party website that will outbound so triggering is happening from my side and then I am sending some data to the third party that is called outbound triggering happening from out I uh, mean third party and they are sending some data to me that is called inbound 
understand so different basic difference between inbound and outbound basically when we will talk about the integration we have to be very clear that which is inbound and which is outbound okay now next take uh, uh, let's talk about that what is the basic stuffs we required for the integration so let's say um, your uh, your uh, someone said that you need to be integrated with um, service now or you need to do uh, or you need to work on the integration for a particular application how do we do that basically uh, to integrate that these are the things basic things is required so the very first thing is that you have to be identified that the integration that you are going to build is the inbound or outbound it can be happened by direction like inbound and outbound can be happened both the case but first you have to de uh, decide that what is the uh, it is inbound or outbound next you have to decide that endpoint so either if you are consuming or if you are sending some data to third party then you need that endpoint or someone is consuming you in that case you need to provide them the endpoint basically let's say i am going to uh, uh, you know i am going someone's house right in this case i need to have the address where should i go and then there definitely authentication which is like a key i if i am going to someone's house i need a key or you know security right that is called basic authentic i mean authentication so we have basically two type of authentication there are various um, type of authentication like basic authentication over authentication so these are the type of authentication manual authentication these are the type of authentication i need so whenever you are going to integrate you definitely need that uh, authentication and then method which types of method i am going to use so i should get the data i should put the data or i should post the data these are the details we'll talk about the later but we should whenever as a, a developer or as an implementer whenever i am going to um, discuss with the some third party i should get these details very first that authentication that uh, endpoint type of integration then method like get put post uh, then header in the header what type of data i should pass like uh, content type application or json then if i am doing some query then i should get the query parameter or if you are, if i am sending some data so i should send i mean i should know that data structure basically and then finally um mid server is required or not so these things we need to know that mid server is required or not now let's say when somebody giving us let's say when i am discussing with some third party application they they said these are the informations uh, uh, they said they pass this other information by this how do we know that what all details i need basically if you see this is called ca url inside the url everything is detailed every details are present so let's see so this is my endpoint you can see this is my endpoint and here if you see here c is param limit equal to one which is nothing but a query so first uh, type of integration i am sending so it means that it's outbound and then this is the endpoint and then if you see the authentication they have provided this is the authentication um so this is the user is nothing but authentication next is method method they have said that get method i should use that header they said that in the header i should add that accept equal to ac uh, application slash json and then query um, a query parameter they said that in the query parameter i should pass the sys param limit equal to one so in this case you know um basically um the way uh, when we discuss to that third party application or when we discuss about the integrate any of this application either we can send this kind of information to them or they will provide me this kind of information from them from that i have to be extract that what are the things i am required what are the uh, requirement i have everything i'll get from this one okay so that's i guess clear now we'll talk about that uh, integration tool so to integrate anything into the service now or integrate uh, any other application you need various tool to for the testing so let's say you need um certain test that you know you can't keep on sending data to third party or maybe third party cannot keep on sending to you for testing purpose for that we need certain uh, you know tools called uh, probably so uh, so py postman rest api explorer these are the application we probably need for the testing purpose now let's talk about that integration module so when we access to the service now application uh, for our complete integration package if you type that web service in your left navigation 
you will be able to see this module called uh, system web service and inside that you will be able to find out that inbound outbound rest scripted rest rest and so banner api analysis graph ql these are the module using that we will actually do the integration so now um, let's talk about that uh, inbound integration so to as i mentioned that two type of integration we do have one is the inbound integration another is the outbound integration so inbound means i am receiving the service now instance is receiving some data right so that building the inbound integration is much easier testing is much easier so uh, it's a very simple step so we'll talk first that inbound integration and in this inbound integration we in a various way we can do that or various way we can achieve the inbound integration so let's see so if you see here in the inbound integration so various way we can achieve the inbound integration below the method you can use to integrate inbound uh, it should be inbound uh, integration Okay, so various way we can do the integration one of the uh, uh, way is the table level api table api web service okay so the as i mentioned as a tools okay or or the terminology we will use two type of terminology one is the rest another is the soap okay so rest soap these are the terminology we are going to use to integrate that what is rest what is soap we'll discuss that further and uh, advantage disadvantage we'll discuss that but before that, we'll talk about that. Uh, we are going to use the one of the method called table API web service and that the method or terminology or technology they are using called the REST terminology. Okay, next is the import set web service. Um, scripted web service, which is SOAP, scripted web service, which is REST and then JSON V2 web service. So these are the five ways we can integrate or we can receive the data from third party to our site. Okay, so from the third party, we can receive these are the data. Okay, these are the way we can receive the data okay so in our next session we'll talk about that a table api first and then definitely before that we'll talk about that uh you know um, the rest and so what is the rest message what is the soap message and we'll discuss further so that's it for today thank you very much have a great day